Hello again. Strava, Training Peaks, and other applications use um, use metrics called fitness, fatigue, freshness, um, chronic training, load training, stress, balance, acute training load. They're all different terms. I thought it might be useful to do a video to discuss how important these numbers are, what they mean, and uh, and how you can use them, or whether it's actually best to use them or best to ignore them. So I'll concentrate on Strava and Training Peaks. The three main things that attract over time are what's known as fitness freshness and fatigue and uh, they're used in both training peaks and and Strava and these are based on a thing called training stress score which is if you do a workout you get a training stress score or you get a relative effort value in Strava and the training stress score or the relative effort is based on how hard you go in the intensity and how long you do it for the duration fitness is how much training you've been doing for a fairly long time so three months if you use the standard parameters in training peaks, I'm not sure about Strava because they don't seem to be um, transparent with, with, with how they calculate their fitness value, but it's pretty much the same. So that means that if you haven't been training consistently for three months, or if you've just started doing training peaks or Strava, then the numbers won't be populated and therefore the numbers aren't particularly meaningful. I don't like the term fitness because it implies that the higher the number the fitter you are and that's not true and fitness is specific to your event and also you can just make yourself extremely tired by chasing big numbers so i prefer chronic training load which is the original term that was used in the um, training and racing with a power meter uh, because that represents how much training you've been doing for a long time the chronic training load i prefer to think of it in those terms and use that term to describe it because it avoids getting caught up into chasing a big fitness value. Fatigue is the same formula as fitness, but it's over a shorter period of time. So the period of time that that works over is say a couple of weeks, if you use the standard parameters. But again, I don't like the term fatigue. I prefer to use the term acute training load because it's a much more descriptive of what it is. It's how much training you've been doing acutely over a short period of time. And the freshness value is just the difference between the two. So say you've got a chronic training load, a fitness value of 75, and an acute training load, a fatigue value of, of 50, then your training stress balance, your freshness is 25. And uh, as a consequence, it, that suggests that you're fairly fresh. And if it's a positive number, means you're more fresh, and a negative number means you're more tired. So that actually, the training stress balance, the freshness, can be actually could could more reasonably be described as fatigue and freshness uh, at either ends of the spectrum. Again, I like to use training stress balance, which is the balance between your chronic training load and your acute training load. And you might think that the higher your freshness the better you'll perform. In reality, some people perform better off a, a bit of, you know, a negative value of uh, training stress balance, and some people perform better off a, a positive value. If you're doing a long endurance event, like uh, I know a lot of you are that watch this channel, then uh, having an, the important factor really is just to be sufficiently rested. The exact value of this training stress balance isn't too critical. If you're training for a shorter event, like a, a running 5k, 10k, half marathon, or even a marathon perhaps, then it's worth experimenting with the form, the training stress balance value, to get a feel for what works for you. Because different things work for different people. And unfortunately, different things work for different people on different days. So you, some days you might perform well off, um, you know, for high training stress, balance so like 10 or whatever or uh, and sometimes you might perform well off a, a low training stress balance because it's the combination of the numbers that's very important so talking about the combination a bit more and also remember this is really individual to you so what might be high for me might not be high for you or what might be high for you might not be high for me so if you've got a high chronic training load a high fitness one week at that chronic training load might be okay you know you might be able to sustain training maintain that for you know for a week if you try and do the same training again for two weeks you might find that a bit of a struggle and if you try doing it for three weeks you might get exhausted and have to take three weeks off so um you have to think about the also the absolute values relative to where you've been in the past so it's not this just this training stress balance that indicates that you're um that you're tired or fresh or fatigued 
It's the training stress balance relative to the chronic training load and the acute training load, the absolute values for you specifically. And also, of course, you've got to account for external factors. So I have coached an athlete and uh, a cyclist and she was quite happily maintaining the chronic training load, a fitness value of over 100. And, but she was in a period of she wasn't working, she was between jobs waiting for a new job to start. And she just started a new job. It's still it's a part-time job, so you would expect it not to have that big an influence. But now we've had to drop her training quite significantly because the job's quite demanding. It's demanding a lot of her energy. And as a consequence, her chronic training loads now down to sort of 70 or 80. And if you want a rough number, then a chronic training load, a fitness value of around 70 in training peaks is pretty good for somebody who's working full-time for a cyclist maybe a bit lower for a runner maybe a bit lower if you're a bit older um, if you're doing a lot of long training sessions at the weekends then you might be able to get a bit higher so you have to work out what works for you but sort of 50 to 70 or 80 if you really um, you know you're really well conditioned they're the sort of ballpark numbers that you can look for in uh, um, for uh, chronic training load and of course the acute training load you know sometimes that'll be higher than the chronic training load and sometimes it'll be lower I mean if you have a hard week it'll be above your chronic training load if you have a recovery week it'll be below your chronic training load and the freshness value varies as well it's all based on this training stress score or relative effort value so in training peaks they use the training stress score which is a combination of the intensity and the duration of the workout you've performed, every workout, every exercise that you record gets a training stress score and it uses these training stress scores per day to calculate your chronic training load, your acute training load and, you, and consequently your training stress balance. Training stress score is the intensity factor squared which is how hard you work in um, times the duration in hours times 100 so in theory the idea is if you work at your FTP for an hour you get a training stress score of, of 100. If you can work for more than a, an hour with an intensity factor of greater than one then you need to think about what set, resetting your thresholds because they're probably not correct. So how do you use this what they call the performance management chart in uh, training peaks and fitness freshness chart in, in Strava to guide your training? Well Personally, and I think for the case for a lot of coaches, it is I don't really use it, the absolute numbers, uh, in planning or tracking training. I use the numbers as a guide. Say I'm coaching somebody or training myself for a long event, I'm interested in how performance is over a long event. Uh, a long training session might be used as a test. And then from that long training session or a long event, a long test event, then you identify strengths and weaknesses and then you focus on those strengths and weaknesses. So you use those as uh, performance parameters, key performance indicators or, or whatever you, you want to call them if you're into the business world, to see how those are progressing. And I use the chronic, chronic training load, acute training load and training stress balanced to just get a feel for the overall training volume. So I don't plan the volume of training according to the performance management parameters. I just use the parameters to keep an eye on the volume of training. So I say I noticed that the athlete I was working with wanted to improve their average speed, FTP, functional threshold pace, or functional threshold power, critical pace, that sort of thing, uh, pace at threshold heart rate, or, um, are a good good way and a good metric to use for that. So um, I'd probably focus on doing threshold type sessions, you know, your five by five, your three by eight and things like that, maybe a bit of VO2 max, six by three type training sessions, three on three off, to focus on, F, on VO2 max. And I, what I would do is I'd plan those sessions as the main sessions, because that's the parameter I want to change. And then I would try and fit in as much low intensity training and I use a sort of polarised approach if those were the numbers I was trying to increase. Fit in as much zone 2, zone 1 work as possible around that. And often that's governed by available time rather than actual um, energy levels. 
the things that uh, dictate the how much energy gets used is the high intensity training sessions and then i tracked the performance management metrics to just keep an eye on how things were going and uh, along with subjective um, comments um, hlv heart rate heart rate during sessions heart rate as compared to perceived exertion and all these numbers just to see how things are on track see whether things are happening as i would expect them to happen and the important thing is really not to worry too much about the day-to-day thing fluctuations it's look at the trends so is the chronic training load trending up do you want it to trend up are you looking to increase your training volume and how does that compare to what's happened in the past but all within this focus on the important things you know your weakness is what are you actually think specifically about what you're trying to train and then use these trends to um to check uh so to, to sense check everything and if you want to check what's sensible or what's not sensible then do a, do a review you know review what you've done in the past and use the i mean the performance management chart or the fitness freshness chart in strava is an excellent tool for uh, seeing what you're capable of and um, seeing what you're planning for you know for this season is sensible and the seasonal review video that i did in september might be quite useful in using some of those techniques to see what happened in the past to see what's sensible to do now so in summary fitness isn't really fitness so don't go chasing a big number it's chronic training load it's how much training you've been doing for a long period of time and um, yeah it's got some analog towards fitness because the more you do the fitter you get in general as long as you don't do too much fatigue isn't necessarily fatigue it's acute training load it's how much training you've been doing for a short amount of time and these numbers are very personal to you form isn't necessarily form because you might perform really well off a negative form or you might perform really well off a positive form and to some extent that depends on your event it depends on you it depends on the absolute values of the ctl and atl plan to make sure your training is specific to your event and address your strengths and weaknesses. Anyway, hopefully that's useful. Hopefully it's not a lot of nonsense. Hopefully I've not rambled on too much and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.